Hi everyone, welcome to the Rare Record Room. In this video, I should be looking at some records from a group styled as the greatest rock and roll band in the world. These Londoners nonchalantly crashed onto the scene in the early 60s and have swaggered their way effortlessly through the music industry ever since. I am of course talking about the legendary Rolling Stones. Hello and welcome back, thanks for joining me once again. In today's episode from the Rare Record Room, I shall be looking at the beat scene of the early 60s and we'll be describing the 1964 US studio album 12 by 5 from the Rolling Stones. This was their second long player in America, following their debut album entitled England's Newest Hitmakers. Like their chief rivals, the Beatles, the early albums put out by the Stones in America differed significantly to their LPs released in their home country. This particular title did not appear in the UK and it was not until their Satanic Majesty's request in late 1967 that a Rolling Stones studio LP would be released in an identical format in both the UK and US. 12 by 5 which as the name suggests is a 12 song package from a five piece band was recorded in Chicago and London at various sessions throughout 1964 and released on 17th of October that year. It is essentially an enlarged version of their record 5x5, Five Five, a five track EP which was released in the UK, extended to a full length LP by adding seven tracks including the British 45 It's All Over Now, a Bobby Womack cover which had hit the number one spot in the UK but had not been released as a single in America. Also included here was the earlier version of the ballad Time Is On My Side, dominated by Ian Stewart's electronic organ instead of the more familiar version featuring electric guitar. The record contains three Jagger Richard originals, Good Times, Bad Times, Congratulations and Grown Up All Wrong, and two group compositions under the pseudonym Nanka Felge, being Empty Heart and the instrumental 2120 South Michigan Avenue. That title refers to the address of the celebrated Chess Studios in Chicago, where the track was recorded. Chess artist Muddy Waters played a guitar solo on the track, but this was edited from all releases except the version found on the German LP Around and Around. Covers included on the LP included songs by Chuck Berry, Dale Hawkins and Wilson Pickett. Upon release, the LP peaked at number three on the Billboard album chart, and has been certified gold by the RIAA. Although not available in the UK, the very first pressings of this album were in fact made in England, so are technically US imports. This is the version in mono that I would describe here. It appears on a red or maroon London Records company label with text printed in silver, issued under the catalogue number LL3402. The label states made in England at the 12 o'clock position, and the rim text to the lower half is an all rights reserved notice. The bold London logo is in italics, followed by the FFRR listening motif set within a box. These imported pressings do not display the album title on the label. These records were pressed by Decca and feature their characteristic pressing ring or a deep groove around 15mm from the label circumference. A subtle variant exists, shown here, where the rim text at 12 o'clock adds the name of the manufacturer, reading Made in England the Decca Record Company Limited. The label design is identical in all other respects. The records were shipped to the States in British inner sleeves, but without the outer card covers, which were printed in America. The inners are a company die-cut paper design printed with the bold London Records logo at the top, this comes with a polythene lining bag and on the reverse side the text focuses on the full frequency range recording with a printed section explaining the technique. There are two variants of this inner, one printed on dark brown paper and the other on white paper. Both state Made in Great Britain on the lower right corner of the London advertising side but on the reverse FFRR side the Made in Britain text is found only on the white paper version. Incidentally, this image clearly shows the two different coloured labels, either red or maroon. 
As mentioned, these were paired on arrival in the US with US printed sleeves, which feature a moody portrait of the band taken by David Bailey. Sleeves are a non-laminated card construction with two card 12-inch squares pasted over with printed slicks. Unlike the British flipback style sleeve, the edges are weak with only a thin paper covering. As such, they often suffer from seam splits and without a glossy laminate protection, they suffer heavily from storage or ring wear, as shown on the left-hand example. The cover on the right is in lovely condition and is unusual thus. There is a misprint on the early sleeves where track three of side two is misspelled congratulations with a D. The catalogue number is shown at the top right corner and the statement printed in USA appears at the lower right. The sleeve notes were drafted by the Rolling Stones manager Andrew Lou Goldham, who also produced the album and the arrangement was by the band. These imported records are quite valuable and much less common than the later American London pressed examples which I will cover in a separate video. Copies in decent condition are listed in the 10th edition of the Goldmine Record Album Price Guide with a value of $300. And that just about brings to an end my brief history run through look at the second American Rolling Stones LP 12 by 5 That's all for this time. I appreciate you joining me and I hope you enjoyed the content today. If you did like the video, please feel free to subscribe to the Rare Record Room channel to see similar episodes and to receive notifications for new uploads as they happen. Thanks for watching and I hope to catch you next time. Until then, take care. Bye for now.